I've made up your test. Taylor, on your test, I am going to ask you to do equations where I give you the symbols. In your homework from last day, I gave you some that were word equations, where you had to go from word to symbol to balance. I don't think I'm going to give you well, I might give you just one on your test, but I'm not even sure I'm going to give you that. I'll give you more specifics. But what are the six types of reactions? So the first type we have was synthesis. What was the general form? We said you have one thing plus one thing. And what does that give you? OK. That's synthesis. That's the general form. Something plus something becomes one compound. Hey, you want an example? Um, H2 plus O2. Why'd you put the twos, Mr. Do it, Mr. Hofbrinkle? Hey, what can I combine hydrogen and oxygen to form? H2O. Is that balanced? No, but I would have no problem then asking you to balance that. I would have no problem giving you this equation and saying, what type is it? I would have no problem giving you that and saying, predict the product. OK? All of those are fair game. Uh, if I wanted to balance this, I think that to balance it, it would be, uh, I need two oxygens on the right. And I think a two right there that gives me four hydrogens and two oxygens become four hydrogens and two oxygens. Uh, what do you look for then? Two single elements become one compound. That's synthesis. That's synthesis. What's decomposition? The opposite. It's exactly the opposite. Uh, a, B becomes A plus B. Here's an example. MgO becomes, predict the products. If I just gave you that and I said, tell me what we're going to get. I, that, that's the only thing that fits. Now, by the way, there are, Cameron, I'm going to say hundreds, uh, dozens of different types of chemical reactions, probably hundreds. We're just having to worry about this, these six. So if you can't fit it into these six, you know, then it's not going to be doable. We, we should be able to fit it into the six patterns that I've given you. So I agree. Uh, Mg plus O, and he's wrong. O2. Uh, how would we balance this then? What doesn't balance right now? But, and again, I said to you, Tyra, we're going to try and do the balancing in our head. On a test, on a quiz, feel free to make a list of everything like I taught you last unit and the unit before. But if you're getting comfortable doing kind of the balancing on the fly, I think that's a healthy thing. That's a good thing. What doesn't balance right now? Oxygen. How many oxygens on the right? Right now, how many oxygens on the right-hand side? Two. So to balance, I might guess putting a two there. What has that changed? Magnesiums. How many magnesiums on the left? Two. You know what? I'm going to need two there. What do you look for here? One compound, two singles, right? Is that OK, Ty? OK. What's the pattern for single replacement? Yep. A compound and a single. So it all depends. If this is a metal, then it can bump the metal. But if it's a non-metal, it'll bump B. It'll bump the non-metal. But then you end up with. Since you said we're replacing the A, CB plus A. Uh, 
How about uh, aluminum plus CuCl2? I got one thing plus two things. I mean, that's really what I look for. I look for a singleton and a pair. And you can come up with any kind of creepy dating things that you want to. Someone's cutting in on a dance or whatever metaphor you want to to keep track of this. Aluminum, the solo. Is it metal or non-metal? Aluminum. Metal. So is aluminum going to bump the copper or is aluminum going to bump the chlorine? Is, is aluminum going to displace? Is it going to bump out the copper? Is it going to take the place of the copper or is it going to take the place of the chlorine? It's going to take the place of the copper. I'm going to get uh, Al and I think it's going to be Cl3 and I'm not going to bother balancing this, but that's a metal replacing another metal. I'll give you one. Let me see if I can make this a bit bigger so you guys can read it. I'll give you a non-metal replacing a non-metal. How about uh, sodium iodide plus fluoride, uh, F2, Mr. Hofbrinkle. Fluoride is the singleton. It's going to want to bump a non-metal and you would get NaF plus I2. Okay. Cutting in on a dance, sort of, if you're looking for an analogy. Take it as creepy as you want to, but I'll stop there. So again, I would have no problem. I would have no problem. Yep. Okay. I would have no problem just giving you that and saying fill in the blank. Could you, by looking at the pattern and saying, okay, I see a singleton and a pair. Alex, it's not decomposition. It's not synthesis. What does it fit? And then predict what the reactants turn into, what the product will be. Okay. Or I wouldn't have much of a problem. Oh, you know what, Mr. Duick? You didn't finish this one. It would be, I'm sorry, A, good gosh. Good gosh, Duick. ALCL3 plus, sorry guys, I forgot to add the copper sitting all by itself, didn't I? Or I would have no problem giving you the right hand side and saying, hey, where did it come from? Double replacement. What's the pattern here? Compound plus compound. <coughs> Excuse me. And these guys are going to trade. The metals are going to trade partners. You're going to get AD plus CB. Why did I write CB and not BC? What do we always write first? Metal. Okay. Now, often, often, this is going to be aqueous. They're both going to be dissolved in water. But when you pour them together and shake them up and keep shaking them, all of a sudden you're going to see one of the remaining products ends up being a solid. Which one? Let's pretend it's that one there. It becomes a solid. We had a fancy word for that. We called it a precipitate. A precipitate. This is kind of a neat chemical reaction. You shake two liquids up, and suddenly you get a non-liquid settling on the bottom. Okay. Uh, you want an example? Um, okay. Here's one that I wrote down. 
lead. NO3, NO3 is nitrate, I think. And potassium iodide become What's the charge on NO3? Anybody have their periodic table out? Where's my periodic table? NO3 is minus. Okay, and can lead be a charge of one? I hope we're going to pretend it. You know what? Really, it should be lead NO3 2. So we'll do that. And we'll get, because uh, lead's got a charge of 4 or 2. 2 is the first most common one, so we'll say it's got a charge of 2. So we're going to get. PBI2 and KNO3. That's not balanced, but I crisscrossed, right? Lead iodide, actually lead 2 iodide, and potassium nitrate. It is nitrate, right? NO3 is nitrate or not? Yeah. Really? You haven't memorized those? No, I haven't. Um, Two metals change partners. Uh, if you want to go creepy, think you're going out on a double date with somebody else and you realize you like the other person better and they like you better, so you guys say, eh, change tables. I'll sit next to so-and-so instead. Taylor says, you mean there's hope? There's a chance. I don't know, making fun of you. Neutralization, acid base. By the way, this looks like a double replacement in that it does look like A, B plus C, D, Jasmine. However, what you'll notice is there's an acid and a base as your A, B. How, how, how can you tell that it's an acid? Well, you know what? First of all, let's write down acid plus base results in Ryland. What does our reaction always result in? Salt. And water. Salt. What's the salt? Whatever's uh, not the H two O. That's called that. That's table salt. Is a special subgroup of this. Um, so what you're really looking for then is. H for acid, and then something attached to it. I'll put a capital A for something attached to it. Plus, how do I know it's a base? And so how about some compound with a hydroxide attached next to it? And then, That H and the OH over there combine to give you your, stay colors, Mr. Duick. We did it in black, H2O. And this is going to be, oh, careful. Why did I write BA and not AB? What always comes first? The metal. And you know what? The metal must be uh, that guy there. Uh, as an example, the acids that I'm going to stick with this year are going to be the ones on your yellow sheet, or sorry, uh, on the back of your pink sheet. You got the four sitting there on the back of the pink sheet, okay? So the simplest one is good old hydrochloric acid, HCl, and I'll combine that with sodium hydroxide. And you can see, Alex, that does, it is technically a double replacement reaction, but this is a special subgroup. This is a neutralization reaction. We're going to get H2O, and we're going to get NaCl. Have I balanced that? Nope. Or have I? Uh, oh, you know what? That happens to be balanced, I think. I got two H's on the left. This is the only tricky part with this, Lydia, is you've got a spot that those guys 
form that. It's the one time that we broke apart that OH and treated it like separate, instead of treating it like one funky compound. It's the one time we took a polyatomic molecule and said, ah, let's treat it like a, let's break it up. Okay. Uh, for hints, I think we have it here. Acid plus base gives salt plus water. So I'm not going to rewrite that. And then the last one, and those of you that were away last day, this is what we looked at. Uh, combustion. Um, in English, burning. And you need two things. What do you need for anything to burn? Julia, can you put your phone away, kiddo? Thank you, dear. Oxygen, can I be fussy and say O2? Let's, let's, let's emphasize the whole Mr. Hofbrinkle diatomic. And then what you need is a hydrocarbon. And that can be something with just a CH, uh, carbon and hydrogen, or it can be something with a C and H, and it can be an alcohol. Both of them burn with oxygen. These ones are tricky to balance. So you need a hydrocarbon plus O2. But this one, the results are always the same. The products are always the same. When you burn something, and this is, I'm sorry, the whole climate change greenhouse gas, what do you get? Carbon dioxide and water. Water, not too big an issue. CO2, a very serious issue. Hydrocarbon. Uh, if I wanted to do this as like with my generic one, Jasmine, I'm not going to use A's and B's. I'm going to say you got some carbons. I don't know how many. You've got some hydrogens. I don't know how many. And you might, Allison, have some oxygens. I don't know how many. So it could either be Alex, a fuel, like a methane or ethane, or it could be ethanol, methanol, and then uh, these are tricky to balance. Easy to predict the, the results, though, the products. Always going to be carbon dioxide and water. I'll almost certainly give you one of these to balance on your test. In fact, I probably ask you to predict the product as well, which sage is carbon dioxide and water. But the balancing, especially because you got hydrogen, the reason these are tough is you got oxygens in more than one location and in more than one location. Let's try one, Mr. Duick. Okay. How about uh, C3H8? This results in CO2 plus H2O. <clears throat> if I had to balance this, where would I start? Carbon. Carbons. How many carbons on the left? Three. three. So I'm definitely going to need three carbons on the right. I would start out doing that. What else has that changed on the right-hand side? Oxygens. How many oxygens now in this little comp, this little molecule right here? Can you see six? And I got one sitting here for a total of? Seven. So how many ha do I have to have on the left? Seven. How many have I got right now? Two. How can I change that into a seven? Well, I guess I could sort of put a 3.5 there. Am I allowed to leave a 3.5 there? No. Let's come back to that, though. What else doesn't balance? Hydrogen. You know what? Let's look at the hydrogens. I got eight over here, which means I better put a change colors, Mr. Duick. I'm erasing everything. Ooh, you're right. I put a four there. That gives me eight. Ooh, how many oxygens do I have now on the right-hand side? Six, four is what? Ten. Oh, I don't need to put a 3.5 there after all. I think I just put a 5 there. Okay. I don't have a good hint to put there or what to look for. Hey, it's a hydrocarbon 
and oxygen, but I already said that on the left-hand side. I'm not gonna repeat myself. So that's to kind of help you keep stuff straight. That's for a study guide. No, you can't bring that into a test, but hopefully Allison, that'll help you figure stuff out, okay? Can you uh, find out what I, or get out the homework that I gave out last day? And those of you that were away, I'll give you copies of it in a second. In particular, can you find the section 6.1 homework? That was the one that looked like this, okay? Can you all look up? I am totally good with uh, all of these here. I am on the test going to give you some reactions to balance and classify where you have the symbols. So I assigned the odd numbers, and that is still homework. And there's the answers. Uh, those of you that were away, number 23, we had to put a 3 in front of the HF. So on the answer key, uh, Julie and whoever else. Okay. <sighs> this one here. Now, if you've done this sheet already, great. Doing the odd numbers, which was a total of uh, 10 questions. I've decided I'm only going to put one of these on your test, okay? These are tough. If you did them great, here's what I'm really going to say now. I'm, it, yeah. I wrote do the odd numbers. I'm going to say classify all of them because you can figure that out from the words as well, I think. You can classify them. Um, I figure if you can do the first five, you're probably in pretty good shape. Oh, the first five are all, oh no, this is a double replacement. I wasn't a big fan of the uh, word questions. Uh, then we get to the next sheet, which was predicting the products. I'm totally good with asking you to predict the products. What did I assign for uh, this one here? All of them? Okay. Yeah. All of them. Except, oh, I did, nuke the, I did nuke the word ones here, did I? Okay, good. And then we had uh, that there. The other bit of the homework that I gave you that there was a typo on was this here. I gave you classifying chemical reactions. Uh, this is all going to be due as far as I'm concerned Monday. Okay, you'll get time today. I'm going to do a lesson. You'll get time Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm hoping to finish the unit off today and make Wednesday mostly marking a quiz, going over review. Friday, you're not going to have any homework. Uh, there is a typo on the back, though, where it says what two types of reactions. Actually, it's what one type of reaction. There is one acid-base neutralization that appears that I didn't see before, but there is one. So there's one type of reaction that doesn't appear on this handout. Okay. I have a take-home quiz for you. Alex, hustle back, kiddo. Can you take a look at this, please? Okay. So, here's your take home quiz. It says this classify each of the following as synthesis, decomp, the, the six. You can use the abbreviations or you can write up the whole word and then balance them. Oh, and I think three balance already. So, not all of them need to be balanced. I'm going two marks each, one mark for the classification one mark for the balancing. So for the balancing, I'll take a half mark off for each thing that's wrong. That's the first section. If you turn the page over, then on the back, I take it one step further. Now I'm actually asking you to predict the products. Now, when you predict the products, you'll have to crisscross properly. You can't just say, so for example, when I look at number one, to me, number one is clearly a single replacement. I think the zinc is going to replace the magnesium, but you can't just say, oh, it's going to be Zn, SO4. Those might not crisscross properly. I might have to add brackets. I might have to, bra I might have to balance, okay? Oh, uh, life sucks. It stinks. I hate myself. Hey, don't be so negative. No? Tough audience? Okay. Do when? Monday. Okay. I'm gearing towards uh, us not having class uh, Fridays and no homework for the weekend. So I'm going to, I know you guys are tired. I'm going to start the next lesson, finish it Wednesday, give you the rest of Wednesday to work. Okay? But that's due Monday. So section 6.2. Okay? 
I think I can probably finish this in about 25 minutes. And the, the title or the heading is Factors That Affect the Rate of Chemical Reactions. How can you speed up or slow down chemical reactions? We just finished Allison classifying six of them. Now we want to say, now that we can classify and predict, how can you slow down or speed up? How quickly or slowly reactants turn into products is called the rate of reaction or the reaction rate. And this year, there are primarily going to be four factors that affect how fast or how slow uh, the reaction rate for a chemical reaction. What are the four? Temperature. You heat up or, or cool down an object, you can change its reaction rate. Surface area. Surface area is how much of the substance is exposed to the other substance. Concentration. Taylor says, my mom says I lack concentration. No, not that kind of concentration. We're talking about how strong or how weak the substance is, how concentrated it is, how much of it you have in any given area. How pure it is, sure. And then the last one is the cool one because it explains you guys the presence of a catalyst. Went for your visit, now you're ready to go? Okay, uh, Matt and Alex, I gave out a take home quiz. It's due Monday, but please have it done for Monday. What I wanna try and do is finish off the unit today or almost, and then Wednesday is gonna be review, practice, and then Friday is the basketball game. What's a catalyst? We're gonna talk about that. But this turns out to be hugely important. There are a whole bunch of chemical reactions that you need to survive inside your bodies that normally need to happen at very high or very low temperatures, except in the presence of a catalyst. Let's talk about the first one then. Temperature. I'm willing to bet you have a pretty good understanding of this one. If you heat up something, do you think the chemical reaction would speed up or slow down? Speed up. This is explains boiling water, this explains cooking. So yeah, warmer equals faster, colder equals slower. So on your test, what I'm going to do is I'll explain to you some kind of chemical reaction. And then I'll say, oh, if you add heat, will the reaction speed up or slow? So maybe I'll even say, oh, and this reaction took eight minutes. If we added heat, would you expect it to take more than eight minutes or less than eight, less than eight minutes? Or I may say, if we moved it outside into the cold, now what would happen? It would take longer, okay? Remember your kinetic, kinetic molecular theory from grade eight and nine, matter is made of particles. The more energy they have, the faster they move, the faster they collide with each other, the more likely it is that a chemical reaction occurs. Reactions occur when reactants collide. So if the temperature is increased, the particles move faster, so they collide more often. Oh, and they collide, they collide stronger. They hit harder. And they react more often. I wrote down here, reading check page 274. I think we're going to pass on that. Let's go to concentration. Something some of you are lacking in. Okay, concentration, Matt, you said the word uh, how pure. It refers to the amount of a substance dissolved in a liquid. So yeah, it's another synonym would be how pure an object is, how pure a substance is. Yep. Chemical reaction rates 
are all about the number of collisions between particles you can create. So heating up helps, or you know what? Using the same ideas as heating up, so using the same ideas as temperature, if the reactants are more concentrated, molecular collisions will happen more often. So the reaction will happen faster. Dylan, if you have more of the substance, it's more likely that substance A bumps into substance B and you get your chemical reaction. If you only have a few molecules of substance A, it's much less likely that substance A bumps into substance B and you have any kind of chemical reaction. Okay. I think so far this is fairly common sense-ish. Many of you, certainly for temperature, you, are, you folks all guessed at what the result would be. And I think this one makes sense as well. Surface area. Surface area is the amount of area of surface that's exposed. Suppose you have a solid iron block, a block of iron, and steel wool of the same mass which has a greater surface area? Which has more surface exposed? The steel wool. Which would rust faster? The steel wool. Why? Because more of it is exposed to the oxygen. Uh, this explains why even if you're cooking and you want something to cook faster, you cut it into smaller pieces. You're increasing the surface area. That's simple. So I wrote down here, the steel wool does. This allows more collisions to occur. And so if you increase surface area, do you think the reaction happens faster or slower? If you cut food into smaller pieces, does it cook faster? There you go. So you, you, can, you need to know the four uh, things that affect reaction rates, but hopefully the consequence of changing them is fairly common sense-ish. Put your pencil down. Yep. Uh, can, hustle back. Now turn the page if you haven't already. I said, turn to reading check page 276. Take turns asking your lab partner the questions orally. You know what? Look up here. I'm going to find the reading check page 276. And we're just going to answer the questions right here. Click. Let's pause the video for the people at home. Presence of a catalyst, the very last one. What's a catalyst? It turns out a catalyst is a type of special molecule, often a protein, but not always. And somehow it has something that it can uh, speed up the rate of a reaction without being used up themselves. You add a catalyst to two, other con to, to two other reactants, and all of a sudden, the reaction rate goes way up. And that catalyst itself isn't used up. It's very cool. Uh, they're useful in situations where it isn't practical to increase temperature or concentration or S period A. What's S period A an abbreviation for? Capital S period, capital A. Surface area. And where does that happen? Inside you guys. We want you to have a fairly stable temperature. We want you to have roughly the same blood concentration. We don't want to have to somehow turn you inside out to increase your surface area. You have a lot of catalysts in you. In fact, a biological catalyst is referred to as an enzyme. How do they work? Well, catalysts and enzymes work by holding the reactants in a 
proper 1L, Mr. Duick. Alignment for the reaction to occur. Maybe in these products, maybe in these reactants, there's uh, certain shells or certain sections or certain electron shells that are more likely to react, and the catalyst holds those in place so they're more likely to bump into each other. A line, a lag, I spelled it right, didn't I? No, it's G, a, a, a lingment, Mr. Duick. How about I try that? Alignment. Thank you for a reaction to occur. So they make the collision more likely to occur. Uh, for an example, and I want you to write this down, hint, hint, I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. You may see this on a test. Cars have a catalytic converter. What that does is it causes some of the yucky compounds coming out of the exhaust before they get to the air and interact with the air, the catalytic converter helps cause the reaction to occur so that they bind inside and they don't get spewed out. Uh, generally with a catalytic converter, they work better when they're warm. So for the first 30 seconds, 60 seconds while your car is started up in the morning, the catalytic converters don't work very well. But then as they warm up, they help the exhaust be less environmentally dangerous. Put your pencils down. So what's your homework? I'm not going to assign this yet. I'm going to give you some of this tomorrow. Your homework for now, oh, you, you, Boy, I can't type. Stuff from last day, and if you finish the stuff from last day, you can work on the take-home quiz. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you homework on reaction rates. I'll probably give you another take-home quiz as well. You'll get two that we'll mark on Monday. And right now, our test is scheduled for next week, Wednesday. Okay. We'll, we'll decide uh, this Wednesday. We'll, we'll decide next class for sure. Okay.